I want to add my welcome to Frank's welcome already. We hope if you're a guest, you'll feel much at home. We want to particularly welcome Dan Schrader, our new Associate Conference Minister, Interim Associate Conference Minister, and our Conference Minister, John Deckenbach. Both of these clergy, these strong men of God and the people will serve you and uh, the wider community well in the coming months. So welcome. We're glad you're here. And staying for lunch. Grace to you and peace from the God who created us, who we come to know decisively in Jesus the Christ, and whose spirit will attend us in this and every moment. It has been such a privilege to serve with you. I dare to hope we've grown together. Last week we heard the story of Jesus in the temple at the age of 12, and the story began with a wonderful phrase, the child grew and became strong. And our hope, yours and mine, over these 19 plus years, our hope is that this portion of the body of Christ would grow and become strong. We have in lots of ways. Thank goodness for Nancy Squire. She's just reviewed 30 years of annual reports. (laughs) All those since the last history of this church was published by the sainted Granises. I've read over them. You have done so much. And I know I speak for York Peeler and for me to say we've been a part, glad to be a part of it, and very, very grateful, very grateful for the graciousness of Linda Griffin, who will put them in a form that can be shared with all of us. We've grown in mission, especially if you include the hands-on things that we both maintained and added So glad Nancy went back 30 years. It's been that long that we have been tutoring kids from Sussex Avenue in Newark. 30 years. And this year's addition was to join with MESH in providing a monthly meal for the ones who are chronically homeless among us here in Montclair. Sure, the dollars are a bit tighter this year. Sorry, John and Dan. I asked them not to ask for money today, but uh, the... Dollars are a little tighter this year. But our mission, our being sent out, has grown. And we've grown in our musical offerings. Wow, what music. And it always makes me cry. And our programs for children and youth have grown. And we've grown in our stewardship of the buildings, thanks to Linda Carey and others. And our nursery school has grown. And some of the teachers are here right now. And even, even our budget has grown. Kind of the same path it did when... Arthur Manning was the president of this congregation. But the question remains, and it is always a good question, and it must remain our question, have we grown in the spirit? Have we grown as individuals in a community of faith? Now that is for God to determine. As we now, you and I, go in different ways and places, but we will continue to grow. I just don't want to let go of that phrase, the child grew and became strong. Now, the liturgical calendar provides a lot of opportunity for us to see how this happens. I mean, it ping-pongs back and forth, 12 years old, infant in the manger, in the temple, being adored by wise men. Now, you'll note those are not the scriptures that Einar or Andrew read for us today, because I think you know the story, I know you know the story, of this Epiphany Sunday, this day of revelation, of manifestation, of an aha, as Betsy says, of a wow, a glory moment. It captures the high and mighty dealing, kneeling before a vulnerable infant. It allows us to focus on the most important concerns before us. The future our hope, all the world's children. Remembering that we are all children of the Heavenly Father, or since you will let me rewrite the text, children of the Heavenly Mother. So I've been listening to some of the stories of our children. They give me hope for this church and hope for all of our futures. As Carl Sandburg said, a baby is God's opinion that the world should go on, Linda wanted, the world should go on. And as Art Linkletter of Less Memory remind us, those kids do say the darndest things. You and I will grow and become strong as we listen to them. For instance, 
my great nephew's way of calling for help or for admitting to his four-year-old mortality is to say, we got some troubles here. (laughs) Now, for one thing, that is so darn cute. You just can't be mad at him, even if he is contributing to some of the troubles. But if you read the stuff that is out about our churches, especially churches like ours, you might say with my nephew Kyle, we got some troubles here. The word is that among those who answer surveys, more consider themselves nuns, that is N-O-N-E-S, not N-U-N-S, more consider themselves nuns than ever before those who are not affiliated with a religious institution or faith tradition has risen from 15% in 2005 to 20% now. 5%. A whole nother quadrant. You could say, with Kyle, we got some troubles here. And you've heard me quote Montclair statistics so much you can probably quote them right back to me. 43% of Montclair is unaffiliated, and we mainline Protestants are now in that other category with people they think are like us, Unitarians and Unity and Baha'i, they think are like us. We got some troubles here. On the other hand, as we love to say, taking another perspective, as we love to say, if 20% or one out of five are nuns, then 80% or four out of fives are something. And if Montclair is not the wasp ghetto it once was, pardon my offense, then we have the opportunity to become a more diverse, regional, maybe even global church. I think our time together has given you a leg up, so to speak, because you put up with my my efforts to broaden your perspective on this country, to know that it goes farther than the Pennsylvania line or the Delaware water gap. And as you've done that, you've increased my love and understanding of this area. You put up with my bad puns, and frankly, I put up with some of your really bad puns. <laughs> so in the spirit of that, I'll quote my friend who grew up in the Ozarks on this Epiphany Day. Why did the wise men, the three wise men, have ashes on their feet? Give up? They came from afar. <laughs> These are not easy times to be Christian, really Christian. People who seek justice and peace and understanding and empathy and who are open to the mystery of faith. These are not easy times because, well, because we want certainty and we know that nothing is certain. We want security. And my friends, you know it. None of us are secure. Some faith traditions are growing because they promise that, but it's a false sense of certainty and security. I hate to break it to them. Nothing is certain, and no one is secure except in the love of God. The story is told of a young boy who was so filled with the Christmas spirit that he decided to go caroling on his own, and he came to the front door, and he got in his boy soprano voice, and he began to sing, Star of wonder, star of fright, star with royal beauty... It is a frightening and a frightful world. And anyone who doesn't see that or know that doesn't have his or her eyes open. We got some troubles here. The only promise of our Christian faith is that we don't face that fright alone and that by banding together and working for justice and mercy and peace, we can, we can, believe me, we can alleviate that fright Only when we are honest about the star of fright, only when we share our fright with others, does it become what it is meant to be, a star of light. Now sometimes we don't share our fright because we are afraid that by sharing it we will magnify it, but rather it is when we keep it within ourselves that we have some troubles here. Well, we, you and I, have faced some of our frights together. After my first interview, a member of the search committee asked, well, do you think we're ready for it? Wondered what it was. 
woman minister. Never mind that Mary Green had been one 20 years before or that, Mary, uh, that Betty Bailey had served you all very, very well for a very, very long time, almost 19 years. It is a fearful thing to have to listen to a woman preach three Sundays out of four instead of one Sunday out of four. <laughs> Terrible. I'm scared of it. But that's not the only it we faced. We faced an unhospitable hospitality team. (laughs) We faced a hymnal with inclusive language. We faced ourselves and whether we were open and affirming. Then we faced the Boy Scouts, and now we're facing the Boy Scouts again, and we love them, and we just wish they'd change. In fact, if you read Nancy's summary, we're cycling through some of the very same concerns we've faced over 19 years, even over 130 plus years. Because? Because we have new people. Because we are new people. Because perhaps we haven't really faced our fright at all. But we've made it through many a tight spot with humor and hopefully with grace. So humor me and be graceful, please. Another epiphany question? What would have happened if there had been three wise women instead of three wise men? Well, they would have asked directions. They would have arrived on time. Well, not me. They would have helped deliver the baby, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and for their gifts, disposable diapers. Well, probably not. It's not very good for the environment, but that's another preacher and another sermon, another time. You see, when you've got some troubles here, it helps to have a sense of humor. Now, not wanting to quote only the younger members of my family, I turn to one of our extended families here. To my knowledge, the one with the most siblings present, I get the answers to this later on. See if you, how well connected you are. Guess which family that might be. And I ask, are there any childhood stories that have become a paradigm for you, a way of looking at life, if you will? And one of them said, well... There was the time we were all at breakfast, and I knew that was a long time ago. I mean, can you remember the last time you all were at breakfast? We were all at the table scurrying to get to work and to school, but one of us was just kind of staring out into space, kind of lollygagging around, not really present. And when we asked her what was going on, she said, I'm just waiting for somebody to pass the Cheerios. (laughs) Out of the mouths of babes. You have to be more present, more proactive than that. You can't just wait for somebody to pass the Cheerios. You can't just wait for somebody to come in that door. You can't just wait for somebody to volunteer for learning centers or to be in the choir or to clean up the kitchen or to rake the leaves. You have to speak up for what you want. You have to be engaged. So to be fair, I checked it out with a person being quoted, and I share this story with the permission of both. Lo and behold, when she told me the story, she had already asked for the Cheerios. She was just waiting for somebody to pass the Cheerios. She'd already been proactive. She was just being ignored. She was just waiting for someone to listen to her and to pass those blooming Cheerios. You see, it's often the smallest, youngest, sickest, poorest, softest voice, least demanding that need to be heard. They're telling us volumes if we'll only listen. So maybe we need to be asked, or we need to ask again if we haven't heard. Clearly we need to notice what is going on around us, whether we're the ones asking or the ones responding or not responding. We need to take notice. So please, Union Congregational Church of the United Church of Christ, please do what in the future what you've always done in the past. Find out what's going on with those around you in the pew, even if you have to stretch a little bit. This is an amazing crowd. See what's going on around you in Montclair and Essex County and New Jersey and the United States of America and God's world. Take notice and pass the Cheerios. Otherwise, you got some troubles here. Now, like every sermon, this one has three points. So a third observation, a third wish, a third hope, a third quote out of the mouths of babes. Guess who this might be? Proud grandfather, often caregiver, when asked about his grandchild, shared that he often said, you never know. 
And it's not just that he said it. He said it at the right time. He said it appropriately. He said it when he was taking size of a situation, an outcome, a possibility, and he said, you never know. We don't, do we? Especially when we're willing to live into the mystery. You never know. You never know what the diagnosis will be. You never know how the kids will turn out. You never know if the markets will go up or down, especially on that day that you cash in. You never know where the star will lead you. You never know who might be lying in the manger. You never know what Herod might really have had in mind. You never know what twists and turns your life may take, especially if you return by another road. You never know if you're like Joseph and listen to God's voice. It may be saying something very, very different. You never know. You never know. Except we got some troubles here. We always will if we're being faithful. You always will if you're being faithful. And the troubles will be much worse if they are ignored. You never know. Except that we all need to be proactive, working on behalf of the vulnerable ones, the ones with the softest voices, especially if they ask with a vulnerable voice. Pass the Cheerios, please. You never know, except that God comes to us and with us, whether we're in a crude stable or on the road to Emmaus or standing on a hillside watching the, the most cruel of human activities or coming to a tomb only to find it empty. Aha! Wow! Glory. You never know. You never know, except by God's grace. Almost did it. Except by God's grace. And we have known each other at our height and at our depth, in our exhilaration and in our despair, in our laughing and in our crying, in our living and in our dying. You never know in our new lives. Together, though in different places, you never know because. Because God is everywhere, always loving and loving and loving some more. And as Christ's body, just a small portion of it, but one that grows and is strong, we can grow stronger and more in our loving. And that, my dear friends, it's great good news to share. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing to his glory, her glory, God's glory. Bob Chase can tell you the derivation of that story. Let's sing to God's glory. Let those who are able stand.